In this video, we'll be diving into how to quickly set up your own RESTful APIs. We'll be walking through the getting it running tutorial from the official Postgres documentation. So by the end of this, we'll have two Docker containers running locally, one with a fully functional API, and with the other being the PostgreSQL database here, and you'll be ready to handle uh, web requests. So at the end, we'll integrate these new APIs into a React application. So if you're new to Postgres, this will be a good reference to get a sandbox running locally so you can start messing around with the Postgres database and the Postgres APIs. There'll be chapters in the video, so feel free to skip around to a specific section. Before we jump into the setup, let's take a quick look at Postgres. Uh, Postgres is a standalone web server that converts your PostgreSQL database into a RESTful API, allowing you to automatically generate endpoints based on the database structure and permissions. So kind of the business logic is all within one single source of truth. This framework eliminates the need for manual CRUD programming and avoiding the pitfalls of ORMs, uh, which can lead to slow and inefficient code. Postgres focuses on doing one thing well, turning your database into a robust API while integrating seamlessly with tools like Nginx, while also being able to use other services like Supabase or Neon to actually host the serverless Postgres for you. While there's no programming needed for the simple operation, if you need more complex business rules, there are many avenues to go down, like RPCs or remote procedure calls, where you'll be able to take in a custom input and programmatically insert into tables. So if you have a single request that hits several tables, RPC may be a good option. I'd recommend that you go through the tutorial first on the documentation, and then if you have any issues, uh, you can go ahead and pop in the video at the specific chapter below. For the first step, if you already have a PostgreSQL database to use or reference, you can skip this and move on to step two. So we'll open a command line and paste that command here. You'll notice that we removed the sudo since we're on Windows. You'll see in the Docker desktop that you have a new image running. For step two, we're going to install Postgres. We're going to use uh, Chocolatey since we already have that installed. When using Chocolatey, you should start your command line with administrator rights. And we're just going to say yes to all. Okay, so as you can see, it was downloaded successfully. And then to test, so I went to the Postgres folder where the executable is stored. And so we're going to run and test this out. And so we're getting this error here. Let's look at the docs real quick. This is the error we ran into with the node in there tutorial. We run into this issue because we don't have PostgreSQL downloaded locally, so the fix that we're going to have to do is go in and download PostgreSQL and then set the path here to point to the bin. So first we're going to download the database and then switch the path. Continue this download since we don't have PostgreSQL. And for this we're going to take off pgadmin since we already have. Now you're going to want to set up a password. Now let it install. For this last part, I'm not sure what this is, so we're going to uncheck this and hit finish, change this path here. And we downloaded PostgreSQL 16, so we're changing this to 16 here. Once you update the path, you're gonna have to restart your command line so the new path is recognized. And then you should be able to run the help command properly. For step three, we're going to create a database for the API, so copy the command. Now we're connected to the database within the command line. We're gonna create a new schema. The next thing we do is create a new table. Okay, so after the table is created, as you can see here, we slightly modified the table name. Doing this usually helps ingrain the learning process for me. We're going to insert in two records. The next thing we're going to want to do is create a new web anonymous role. We're going to grant a permission to our schema, and then you're going to want to grant select on the YouTube videos table. And the next thing we're going to do is create a new role for authenticating to the database as per their recommendations. And then we're going to grant the web anon role to the authenticator. That's it for step three. We should be good to go on the database side. For step four, we're going to first create a new file for the config where we're going to connect to the database with the authenticator account we just created. So let's go to the command line. After that config file is created, you're going to go ahead and run with the specific configuration file you named it. Now we'll test the APIs. You'll test it by hitting curl, and then if you do the specific table name that you see that we have access now through localhost and then the table name. And if you have any of these issues here, you can go back to step three and step two to see how that was set up. And uh, there we have it, a basic API on top of a database. If you continue on to the next tutorial here, the golden key, you'll see how to extend the example that was just created with more access controls and tables and queries. So thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you're now set up with Postgres.